For the next few slides, we're going to be looking at the types of things that can shift demand to the left for a decrease or to the right for an increase. So we've got a bunch of categories. Let's start with the first, income. As our income changes, that can make us more or less inclined to buy particular goods. Some goods are what we call normal goods, ones that we buy more of as our income increases. Think things like vehicles or housing or education or restaurant meals. These are going to be things that we buy more of as our income goes up. But there are also what we call inferior goods, goods that we buy less of as our income goes up. Think used clothing, store brand foods, uh, value menu items at takeout places. For these, as our income goes up, we might be inclined to replace them with goods that we perceive to be more appealing, that we can afford more as our income goes up. So for those, an increase in our income would shift the demand curve to the left, a decrease. Our second category there, preferences, is just sort of a catch-all category. Uh, many of the things that we mentioned back in the exercises didn't have a strict category that they could fit into. But if we think about the Browns trading away a star player, we could describe that as meaning that our preferences for watching the Browns have decreased and so we would, could shift that demand curve to the left. Second page, our first uh, demand shifter is the price of related goods. We don't make our choices about what to buy in isolation, but instead we think about the other things that we could do with our money. As we buy certain things, that can make it more or less attractive to buy other things. Goods that are what we call complements, goods that we consume together, are ones where when the price of one rises, we buy less of it, and so we'll buy less of the complementary good as well. So think about hot dogs and hot dog buns. As the price of hot dogs goes up, we become less inclined to buy those hot dogs, and hence less inclined to buy hot dog buns to go with them. So then as the price of the hot dogs rises, the demand for the hot dog buns falls. Substitutes are goods that we consume in place of one another. Think hot dogs and hamburgers. As the price of hot dogs goes up, we're less inclined to buy hot dogs, and so we switch to an alternative like hamburgers. So an increase in the price of hot dogs increases the demand for the substitute hamburgers. Fourth one, expectations about future prices appears to be difficult, but is actually really easy. For a lot of products, we can buy them today or tomorrow. And if we learn that the price is going to be higher in the future, or we expect that the price will be higher in the future, then we change to buying the good today instead of tomorrow. On the other hand, if we learn the price is going to drop tomorrow, then we choose to buy it tomorrow and not today. So if the price of gas rises tomorrow, that increases the demand for gasoline today, at least as long as we know that price of gas is going to rise tomorrow. On the third page of these demand shifters, we have another couple of examples. The first one on the list is congestion and network effects. What this refers to is that sometimes our choice to buy or use something is affected by how many other people are also buying or using it. Network effects refers to things where as more people use the product, it becomes more appealing to use it. So social media platforms are a great example of that. If lots of other people are using Twitter, then Twitter becomes more appealing to use. If lots of other people are using Facebook, then Facebook becomes more appealing to use. But as fewer people are using those goods, they become less appealing to use. And so more people would increase demand, shift it to the right. Fewer people would decrease it, shift it to the left. Next, we have congestion effects. And this refers to situations in which the uh, more people use a thing, the less attractive it is to use. So driving on a toll road becomes more attractive as fewer people are doing it and less attractive as more people are doing it. 
So as more people use that toll road, we become less inclined to do it. Our de demand for the toll road would decrease. Finally, we've got a nice easy one, the type and number of buyers. More people available to buy a thing means an increase in demand because presumably at any given price, more people would be willing and able to buy that thing. On the other hand, fewer people would shift that demand curve to the left.